Hi everyone, this is a full flight video from Oshawa to Ottawa demonstrating my motion platform, uh, the motion simulator that I built and um, all the custom controls that I 3D printed and programmed which include um, dual encoder box uh, with six encoders, switch box, um, HARAS uh, control um, and uh, throttle quadrant. Um, so hopefully this will make it clear how this whole thing works together. Uh, I've been asked to do this video and uh, well, I hope it proves useful for some of you who are dreaming to build something like this. Let me start by showing how I automated the start of the sim. Connect VR, motion simulator and USB power. Select scenery region. Skipping linker. Loading Microsoft Flight Simulator. Hand tracking. Skipping hand tracking. ATC. Loading ATC. Loading FS realistic. Loading sky for sim. Bush Talk Radio Skipping Bush Talk Radio Loading Sim Shaker Power up the amplifier Loading VR Control Box Loading Motion Simulator Setting CPU Affinities Loading Voice Recognition Sure, whatever you say So now that everything's loaded, uh, let's load the flight plan exported from Simbrief, uh, which is um, Charlie Yankee Oscar Oscar to uh, Charlie Yankee Oscar Whiskey, and both are my airports that I'm selling in Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace. Okay, so let's start the machine. carefully and we'll start engage motion compensation hold on motion comp tracker calibrated okay so I, I've actually engaged motion compensation which tells uh, Windows mixed reality the position of my helmet with the motion rig so it's compensated inside the cockpit and my head moves with the cockpit so let's do something else let's um, let's set the weather to something uh, better and let's set some clouds all right so uh, one other thing I want to do is open the tablet. So this is the flight plan that I created. Okay, and um, we need the second page, which has the routing. So I'm going to show you how it works with my rig. Okay, so we got controls. Mustang pre-flight checklist. Mustang pre-flight checklist. Parking brake set. Landing gear handle down. Throttles cut off. Battery on. Generators on. Avionics on. Fuel boost on. Chocks Avionics. removed. Doors closed. Fuel quantity check. Beacon light on. Pre-flight checklist complete. We'll turn on beacon light. Nav light and anti collision because we're going to start the engine soon. Oshawa executive information Bravo 102 the winds are 201 at 3 knots. Visibility 9 miles. Skies broken. Temperature 3 2.0. Current altimeter is 300. Okay, so we got ADIS on the radio. Let's switch the frequency. 
and see if we have radio contact. Romeo 1, radio check. Romeo 1, you are loud and clear. Okay, so now this control box with encoders, and those are dual encoders, just uh, like in the real plane, like you see here um, in the G1000 and XI system here. Um, so it fully emulates the GNS530, but uh, on G300 it doesn't have the buttons uh, on the uh, bottom end of the screens, obviously. Uh, but it can do almost everything, despite its small size, and uh, the idea was to make it as complex as possible. Okay, so let's press Enter and activate the system. And uh, let's do the engine start before we, we run out of the battery. Um, Romeo 1, ready to copy IFR clearance. Romeo 1 is cleared to Charlie Yankee Oscar Whiskey. Climb via the CY004 departure, then is filed. Expect departure runway 30. Climb to 6,000 feet via the departure. Expect tire clearances three minutes after departure. Squad 4241. Romeo 1 is cleared to Charlie Yankee Oscar Whiskey. Climb via the CY004 departure, then as filed. Climb to 6,000 feet via the departure. Expect higher clearances three minutes after departure. Squawk 4241. Romeo four, 1, feedback four, correct. One. Altimeters 3006, let us know when you're ready to taxi. Altimeters 3006, Romeo 1. 4241. One. So as you can see, I can operate the transponder with this encoder here by clicking, just going through the uh, digits and uh, turning the modes on and off as well. I've done this quickly. And this one controls the altitude preselection. So because I know I'm cleared for uh, 6000, or will be cleared for 6000, that's what I put in. Okay. Um, Romeo 1, ready for engine start. Romeo 1, engine start approved. Engine start approved, Romeo 1. Okay, and my co-pilot, so to speak, does the readbacks. Okay, so um, let's see. Engine start checklist. Engine start checklist. Right engine start, press and illuminated. Okay, and I, st I started from the left engine, it doesn't really matter. Check. Open fuel cut off. Throttle idle. Check. Monitor engine instruments. ITT, check for rise. Oil pressure, steady increase. When stable, increase N2 to 55%. Okay, we can start the right engine as well. Check. Check. Left engine start. Press and illuminated. Check. Open fuel cut off. Throttle idle. Check. Monitor engine instruments. ITT. Check for rise. Oil pressure. Steady increase. When stable, increase N2 to 55%. Okay, so engines are on. We'll put it on idle. Check. Continue checklist. Engine start checklist complete. As you can see, I can interact and I can do a checklist that pause and wait for my input. So we have engines running as well. Uh, so to show how easy it is, or uh, not really easy, but how realistic it is to input flight plans. Let me um, uh, input my flight plan. So I'm going to place the flight plan here. Click the encoder. So this is origin. And uh, my origin is C, Y, O OK 
Okay. Oh. Okay, Oshawa, that's good. And my destination. Okay, runway, runway. Uh, runway, I think it was 32. Uh, I wanted to do 32, so let's do... Oh, 30. Yeah, it was 30. Okay, runway 30. Accept. Let's input destination. Destination is C. C, Y. Y. No, see, actually, it's O. C. It's Charlie, Yankee, Oscar. Uh, whiskey. Okay. Now, runway. I think we got, um... Well, I'm not sure what I actually selected there, but I think it's runway 30, uh, 30, uh, runway 30, uh, no, 32, so it's, it's 32, runway 32, <coughs> enter, okay, so, um, Okay, um, so let's see, uh, we got Mike, India, Victor, Oscar, Kilo, Mivok. So it's... Michael, India, uh, India, Victor, Mike, India, Victor... Kilo. Okay, so we got that. And uh, I can enter the procedures now. And select approach, which is gonna be... Uh, no, actually, you know what? Let's... Well, I can select that. Let's ILS 32. And... Um, Volag, and we can preload it. We can preload it, and uh, in procedures we also have arrival. Arrival is going to be capital five to runway three two at Mivok. Okay, so that's going to be our arrival. We have that, and we can see if we can select departure. Departure. Um, it's runway three zero, I think. We wanted to do uh, no transition. Okay, load. Okay. Okay, yeah, this works better. So somehow the departure doesn't work, but basically then. Other than the departure, we have our whole flight plan. Okay. So we're ready to taxi. And uh, we can open the airport chart. Let's see what we have here. Yeah, that should do it. Romeo 1, ready to taxi. Romeo 1, taxi to runway 30 by taxiways Bravo. Hold short runway 05 in runway 30. Taxi to runway 30 via taxiways Bravo. Hold short runway 05 and runway 30 Romeo 1. Before taxi checklist. Flight controls, free. Flaps, set. 
Speed brakes, check and retract. Anti-ice, as required. Elevator trim, set. Altimeter, set. CAS PFD messages, check. Release parking brake. Okay. Brake set. Taxi lights, on. Lights set. Before taxi checklist complete. Okay, poor guy. Well, this is the hangar. Bye bye, hangar. It's a really nice hangar. Okay, so this aircraft taxi is pretty much on idle. And I don't need the fuel boost. So let's taxi. So basically the goal of building this whole system uh, was to build as immersive motion rig as possible. And I can right now, by the way, feel the bumps in the uh, in concrete uh, taxiway surface, right? I can feel it and I can feel vibration of the engines via the vibration transducers I, I made. Um, also entirely free from old car, car speakers. So we're taxiing. So the goal was to build cheap and the best and most realistic possible motion rig and uh, custom controls because this is the pendular, pendular yoke that's absolutely magnificent the action the smoothness is just unbelievable it's better than anything I tried and um, the cost is basically just a few dollars in parts the whole budget for the whole rig and controls and everything was under $500 Romeo 1 cleared to cross runway 05. Okay. Cleared to cross runway 05, Romeo 1. Romeo 1 contact tower on 133.4. Have a good afternoon. Tower on 133.4, Romeo 1. And by the way, all the voices and everything I'm writing to uh, voice meter banana, and I'm adding in cue so it sounds like radio instead of just normal Microsoft voices. Uh, so I'm cleared to. Um, to cross the runway, so I'm gonna do that. Also, there's a noise I'm mixing uh, when I'm moving on the ground. Um, I have a little bit of a shakes and just, you know, just a little bit of movement on my rig, so it feels like I'm actually rolling, um, and uh, it really helps with realism. And uh, this thing. Um, controls all kinds of things like for example this is the um, brightness and backlight of the controls of the panel and I can even control brightness of the screens here okay so I'm close to the runway I'm gonna break a little bit okay and this is the hold short line Romeo 1, ready to take off. Romeo 1 winds at 201 at 3 knots, cleared for takeoff, runway 30. Cleared for takeoff, runway 30, Romeo 1. Okay, and by the way, I want to have GPS. Yeah. So I can see how close am I to the flight plan. Okay, so I'm clear for takeoff. So landing lights on. Before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. Anti-ice systems as required. Flaps set for takeoff. Flap set. Verify runway. Verified. Transponder set. Controls free. Doors latched. Parking brake off. Landing light on. Before takeoff checklist complete. Okay. 
smoothly advancing throttles. Brakes off. And airspeed alive. Twenty two knots. Keep the center line. Rotate one hundred one knots. Maintain one hundred eighty knots. Rotate. Romeo one turn right heading zero seven five in direct Mike India Victor Oscar Kilo. Heading zero seven five direct to Mike India Victor Oscar Kilo Romeo one. Zero seven five. Zero seven five. Well, I actually wanted to uh, fly over Toronto, but I'm not sure it's gonna work. Positive rate. Speed check. 147 knots. Gear up. I was late with that, but yeah. Flaps up. Gear and up. I can, Three green. I can feel the vibrations of uh, 165 flaps. 165 knots. Passing 300 feet. Flaps coming up. Okay. They want me. Romeo 1 climb to 13,000 feet. Contact Toronto Center on 134.25. Enjoy your Zero. afternoon. Zero climb seven to 13,000 feet. Center on 134.25. Romeo 1. 13,000 feet. Center Piece Romeo 1 it. climbing to 13,000 feet. Romeo 1, good afternoon. Radar contact. As you can see, the motion rig is doing all I'm doing and it fe it's feeding the accelerations not just the position so I can feel the forces acting on the plane right whoa so the movement is actually more than it's supposed to be from just the cockpit but I do feel the accelerations which is really nice okay so uh, 075 Okay, let's see how I can operate the autopilot. So let's engage the autopilot. I can do it here. Okay, and uh, my heading is operated here, so they wanted 075. Um, but I want to capture my uh, flight plan, so let's do this. Heading, okay. Good. Now I want to capture the 13,000 feet height. So I have it pre-selected. I'm going to select vertical speed and at 2,500 foot per minute, which I can uh, change with this uh, outside encoder. And... Um, I can turn off landing lights now and taxi lights too and um, I can put throttles on climb the tent climb checklist climb checklist flaps up gear up autopilot as desired anti-ice as required landing lights off Climb checklist complete. Maintain 200 knots. Okay, now I want to capture the glide slope. So, uh, which... I want to remember... Which button is that? Okay, I think I remember. Okay, so I'm in GPS mode now. And the thing is, this control box works in all planes more or less well, right? So again, it, it, it controls everything on the Boeing, uh, on the GNS 530, on G100, uh, G1000, G3000, controls most of the things, whatever it can be mapped to. Uh, but the same things are doing the same things um, everywhere. 
so um, I can feel and that was the the purpose of custom building this whole thing I can feel everything while I'm in VR I don't have to look for things I don't have really to uh, reach for things too much everything's on my fingertips and the knobs are actually a different shape same as if you look at the um, in the GPS panel like you see the heading and the course are different shapes so this is exactly what I have so I can find out where my hand is pretty much intuitively and I have the buttons and the knobs here that I can operate more or less easy right so I can do the same thing with the uh, radio frequencies for example if you can see like this is the uh, kilohertz and this is the megahertz right and I can uh, swap and swap back if I click here center Romeo one climbing to one three thousand feet okay we can see that altitude is being captured right now and I can put it on cruise so we are in cruise all right so yeah so basically I can operate radio frequencies nav frequencies as well so you can see this is now right same thing um, and I can pre-select height and vertical speed here and uh, this does the speed on uh, Boeing for example or you know whenever you have the autopilot uh, auto throttle rather you can regulate speed here um, heading is here this is course this is barometer uh, and uh, what else this operates the um, FMS or you know GPS and this has transponder and it has the zoom on the GPS you can see the map right now I can zoom in zoom out pretty easily it's very very convenient all right so we got this and I have the full Boeing style throttle quadrant, right? So um, Boeing style levers, and I have auto reverse levers here that I can lift and um, go back. Well, this plane doesn't have reverses, so it's not applicable. I have the take off go around button, Togo, on the left side here, and I have the auto throttle button here exactly the places where it's located on the Boeing 737 and a uh, bunch of buttons and stuff this is spoiler and it actually works on this plane Romeo 1 radio check radio one, loud and clear. okay so just wanted to make sure I didn't mix up the frequencies here while I was showing how it's done so this is the uh, trim wheel so you can, well, right now autopilot controls it, so nothing happens, but uh, you can control the trim with this, as well as in the yoke. And the yoke itself, I cannibalized from my old Logitech yoke, but I just use all the buttons and everything and just wired it into the Arduino board and, you know, programmed the whole thing, so that's how it's working. And it has the whole sensors, meaning there is no friction, uh, and it's very precise um, for all axes and it also has a joystick attachment that I can actually take the yoke off put the joystick on and I can control helicopters or the joystick base planes with the Haras here that can control both planes and the helicopter which I uh, it, it can work as a collective when it goes you know out here I have the whole video about it um, I invite you to watch it how to control helicopters with this and it rivals the you know the controls that cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, and I have everything here it's universal it can be you know adjusted to operate with basically any plane very intuitively and conveniently 
So, um, yeah, it has, as you can, oh, well, as you can see, it also has controls for prop planes, right? It has the fuel mix and it has the prop lever, which is not applicable to this plane, but it's there. And I can also, by, you know, using the puff hat on the yoke, I can only operate just the right lever or just the late lever or both of them together for fuel mix and prop lever. So I have total control of uh, everything. And uh, this is flaps, obviously. So let's open... Um, let's close this one. And let's open the Ottawa Airport chart. And I'll need runway 32 ILS approach. Let's see what we have here. Okay, ILS runway 7, ILS runway 32, so it's 110.3, and yeah, it actually should be preloaded here, and it will uh, activate the radios one, uh, once, you know, the approach is activated. Okay, um, so this is all done. Beautiful landscape. Because when you fly, everything is beautiful. Radio 1, contact Toronto Center on 124.67, good day. Center on 124.67, Romeo 1. Center Romeo 1 at 13,100 feet. Romeo 1, good afternoon. Descent to 13,000 feet, altimeter is 3004. Descent to 13,000 feet, altimeter is 3004, Romeo 1. 3004. Okay, and because of that, I'm a little bit high, so... Let's go down a bit. Normally this kind of a entry-level business jet would cruise at, you know, 33,000 feet or higher um, because it's faster that way, but I want to look at the scenery, so I, you know, use um, much lower flight levels. So, okay, let's switch off autopilot and just showcase the the actual motion, right? So you can see it captures everything precisely, very smoothly, right? It, it uses both acceleration and the actual position of the plane to feed motion cues into, uh, into the movement and I can actually feel everything that's going on all the sudden motion cues and it even seems like you know I'm going upside and you know going up and down and everything because the brain gets three descend well. and maintain one three thousand feet Romeo one obviously this plane is very fast so everything happens really fast and the vertical speed changes really fast so I actually need to keep at thirteen thousand feet which is much easier with autopilot. And let's see. Uh, I veered off a little bit. Let me just use manual control for now. Just because I'm going to deviate more from the flight plan and from the actual GPS path. So the motion rig is going to work. Otherwise it's going to be a very boring video. I will do a video in some kind of prop plane, something fast, and it can get really extreme in terms of movement. But this is uh, the idea of this video is is making a full 
flight hopefully if my cameras will hold because maybe they won't who knows um, they might write out, uh, run out of batteries or you know whatever or just overheat approach Romeo when descending to 3,000 feet Romeo 1 continue descent via the CAPTL 5 arrival for the Isles approach to runway 32 at McDonald Cartier International Continue descent via the CAPTL 5 arrival for the Isles approach to runway 32 Romeo 1 Romeo 1 you are off course Turn right heading 095 to return to course Heading 095 Romeo 1 Well, I don't know it has some <laughs> different arrival I guess or something uh, Anyway, so I need 1400 descent rate which is actually shown there nice oh my cameras run out of batteries not the batteries actually they uh, run out of the recording limit I guess well we'll see what happens see the runway lights I'm right on course which is good actually what I need to do activate approach because I was cleared for the approach so uh, it should be good One. Maybe I activated the approach too uh, soon because I haven't followed the whole procedure. But yeah, okay. So Volux should be at 3,000 feet, but just like they told me. Approach checklist. Landing approach checklist. Landing data confirm. Seat belts secure. Minimums set. Flaps set to take off approach. So I'm too fast for flaps. Romeo 1 descendant may take 3,000 feet clear for Isles approach runway 32 contact tower on 1. Landing lights off. Have a good afternoon. Cleared for Isles approach runway 32 tower on 127.7 Romeo 1. Tower Romeo 1 inbound for Isles approach runway 32. Romeo 1, good afternoon. Continue Isles to runway 32 call when established on final. Autopilot Continue Isles approach error. to runway Off. 32 will call when established on final. Complete. Romeo 1, V ref 88 knots. I need to slow down. Let's use speed brake. Mm, 
need to slow down just enough for the first notch of flaps. Okay, let's switch to localizer. Yep, we got localizer. to be at 3,000 feet at Volang. I'm getting there. Yeah, you can see my landing lights. It's too Distracting. I don't need my landing lights now until I'm on final. Romeo 1, you have traffic at 9 o'clock, 3 miles at 7,900 feet. Romeo 1, after Ducty flight heading 075 to join the approach at Texan. After Ducty heading 075 to join the approach, Romeo 1. Romeo 1 has traffic inside. Okay, so I actually have localizer and glide slope. They want 075, heading 075. So we're turning. And I'm pretty much in glide slope. Ah, this is the runway. Okay. Okay. Full flaps, gear down, I can feel the vibration of gear going down, I can feel the vibration of flaps extending. Okay, I can feel them lock, like I can feel all those events. Now, uh, I can use the trim wheel. I can also obviously use buttons on the yoke. And here's my runway. I think that's my VR controller shutting off. Okay, starting the turn to final. Landing light on. Landing checklist. Landing checklist. Strobe, taxi and landing lights on. Speed brakes, retracted. Maintain the ref 88 knots. Landing checklist complete. Okay, I'm a bit below localizer. Below glide slope. Com 1 is set to 135.15. Nope, I didn't want to do that. Romeo 1, contact tower on 127.7. Contact tower on 127.7, Romeo 1. Tower Romeo 1, inbound for Isles Approach, runway 32.
Yeah, I haven't set the minimums. So let's set the minimums. Barometer. I don't know. 250 feet or whatever is in the chart. Activate. In the meantime, I'm a bit off the localizer. And I'm below the glide slope. And I'm doing this manually on purpose because it's just more interesting this way. Alright, I'm stabilized, lined up and more or less on glide slope. So I need to do 500 feet per minute. Roughly. Get two knots wind from the left. I'm on glide slope. I could lock my autopilot and just follow almost to the minimums. But I'm not going to do that. Start slowing down a bit. Got full flaps. Okay. Landing checklist. Landing checklist. Strobe, taxi and landing lights on. Speed brakes retracted. Maintain the ref 88 knots. Landing checklist complete. Okay, so the ref 88 knots basically uh that's my landing speed, but I want to be slightly above that, maybe like 10 or 20 knots above that. Which means I'm still a bit fast. Romeo 1 traffic on runway. Execute the published missed approach for aisles to runway 32 contact approach on 135.15 to request another approach. Executing missed approach for aisles to runway 32 approach on 135.15 Romeo 1. Approach Romeo 1 request radar vectors for the aisles approach to runway 32. Missed approach? Well... Romeo we'll 1 do that. left heading 170 vectors to the aisles approach for runway 32 at McDonald Cartier International. Well, so heading 170 zero. vectors to the aisles approach for runway 32 Romeo 1. Romeo 1, you have traffic at 1 o'clock, 1 miles at 500 feet. Romeo 1 has traffic inside. Okay. So gear up. Flaps up. And we're doing missed approach. In real life, obviously, you'll execute the specific procedure for missed approach, but I'm just doing whatever ADC tells me to. Romeo 1, turn left, heading 160. Heading 160, Romeo 1. Romeo 1, you have traffic at 10 o'clock, 3 miles at 800 feet. Romeo 1, heading is 170. 
Romeo 1, descendant, maintain 3,000 feet. Descend and maintain 3,000 feet, Romeo 1. So we activated the approach again. Romeo 1 descendant, maintain 3,000 feet. Descend and maintain 3,000 feet, Romeo 1. Inbound to final. Romeo 1, radio check. Romeo 1, you are loud and clear. Yeah, just checking that ADC is still working. So we have localizer, we still don't have glide slope. Because we're 6.5 miles away. So slowing down a bit more, so I can extend flaps, and we'll try landing again. Okay. Tower Romeo 1 inbound for Isles Approach Runway 32. Extending flaps. Still no glide slope, but I'm a bit high. Landing checklist. Landing checklist. Strobe, taxi and landing lights on. Speed brakes, retracted. Maintain the ref 88 knots. Landing checklist complete. Okay, full flaps. Well, I yeah, didn't counteract the flaps extending. Okay, so I need to be lower on the glide slope. I need to be... Yeah, somewhere about there. to be about 800 feet per minute descent. Okay. Landing gear down. Check. Three green. I'm on glide slope, stabilized. Still a bit fast, but I'm slowing down. That's good.
speed below glide slope. Well, that's what you get if you're flying manually. bit low so I'm limiting my descent rate to get back on the glide slope a bit minimal effort so I'm increasing my thrust a little bit And I can see the puppy lights, which are, I think, yeah, look about to be too white, too red, which means I'm on glide slope, pretty much. And I need to be on almost 500 feet per minute descent generally my speed is good that's about what I want at this distance Looks about right. Romeo 1 winds are 168 at 5 knots, clear to land runway 32. Clear to land runway 32, Romeo 1. I can see the runway approaching minimums now Papillas are red but it's okay Okay, we cross the threshold. Throttle to idle. And flare right about now. Romeo 1X runway when able. 
Okay, and we're down. Okay, speed break. Brakes. Okay. And we're fine. I can get off the runway. I don't need lighting lights anymore. Taxi lights on. Okay, I broke. I used brakes too much. And by the way, this is also my airport. Auto International. Romeo 1, clear of active runway. Romeo 1, welcome to McDonald Cartier International. Contact ground on 121.9. Have a good afternoon. Ground on 121.9, Romeo 1. Romeo 1, clear of active runway. Romeo 1, taxi to gate 10 via taxiways Delta, Alpha. Taxi to gate 10 via taxiways Delta, Alpha, Romeo 1. Okay, I think... One zero... He's somewhere over there. And we can see something here. Lots of people going to... All kind of Caribbean vacations and such. And here's open hangar. Six, well, I have no idea where this is 11. Well, who cares? I'm just gonna go into the hangar anyway, because it's a business jet. I'm not using those gates. Those are for poor guys who can afford Sunwing tickets only. I have my own jet, so um, that's what I'll use. Okay, so this is a nice hangar. I'm proud of it. Okay. Okay, and when I'm braking, you can see that again, I feel the acceleration. Look at it, look at this. I brake, hey, and just like in a car, you can feel yourself going forward. Okay, anyway, parking brake. Shutdown checklist. Shutdown checklist. Parking brake, set. Anti-ice, off. Landing light, off. Flaps, take off approach position. Throttles, to cut off. Check. Generators, off. Avionics master switch, off. Battery, off. Shutdown checklist complete. Okay, so let's shut down engines first. Shut down all the lights. We can continue here. Shut down avionics and generators and a battery okay and now we can look at our plane and the hangar and it's really nice I wish I had one like this it's just about two and a half million dollars no biggie yeah so this is it 
This is my motion rig and my custom controls and everything demonstrated in a full smooth flight beginning to the end, hopefully. Um, maybe I got some boring flights and you didn't see them, but you know, otherwise it's fine. So thanks for watching.